<sighs> is my throat ready for this? Probably not, but try it anyway. Standing here in the bright sunshine, looking out over the vast ocean. Those days in London seem like a dream. But I do miss my time in England's vast capital. Is that her father's grave? You know, he's flourishing to a truly wonderful lawyer. I've no doubt that at this very moment, he's fighting some noble cause in court. Forgive me for taking so long to come to visit you. My life has been such a whirlwind since I returned. And no one could have predicted what has happened. Just two months after arriving home. So I Wait. came here today to ask something of you. Tomorrow, I shall be standing in court. For the only time in my life. As a lawyer. Huh? Is there a swan on that bitch's head? <gasps> so please, I ask for your guidance. Kazuma-sama. from the first case of the last one got murdered i mean maybe deserved just a little bit also not playing the lawyer from the last one. I remember almost no names except for her luck. <laughs> Could be real honest about that. I remember faces, names I'm drawing a blank on, except for Kazuma. Because he also got done dirty. Uh, okay, we're at Supreme Court of Judicature. Judicature Defendants Antichamber 3. Susato! That's what it was. Here I am again after nine months. The Supreme Court of uh, Judicature of Japan. I feel so nervous, but I must steal my nerves and find a way to compose myself. Okay, so her father's not dead. I remember it being him falling ill. Potentially. Ah, uh, good. You're here. It doesn't look doesn't do for a lawyer to be late. Oh, yes, um, good morning, sir. I hardly recognize you. You cut a fine figure, counsel. But you look white as a sheet, and those wide eyes aren't doing you any favors, either. Oh, dear. The truth is, I'm so incredibly nervous, I, am, I feel utterly nauseated. I almost wish that I'd never been born. <laughs> That's some extremes. Goodness, not the sort of thing a father hopes to hear from his daughter, I must say. Like, maybe I wish I'd chosen a different profession, not been in this situation, not accepted the situation, but okay. Eugene Mikatova, professor of medicine at the Imperial Yume University. A man who earlier in his life traveled to Great Britain to study the latest advances in forensic medi medical science. 
and of course, my brilliant father. Um, excuse me? Would I be correct in thinking that you're to be my lawyer in court today? Hmm, oh, um, yes. Yes, that's right, miss. Well, I, um, I want to thank you for agreeing to represent me. I swear, I swear on my life. It is a complete fabrication, this whole thing. Ray... Mimbambi? Raybambi? Maybambi? Maybambi? I'm gonna go with that. Born the same year as I am my greatest friend. Though unusual for a woman in her time, she works at the university a research laboratory helping my father. And sadly, she's the defendant in today's trial. This is semi parallel with Kazuma. I'm still blanking on the name of the main character. I don't know how. I messed with him so well, too. Ah, uh, but. Kazuma being lawyer, his friend being kind of in school to be a lawyer, lawyer but being also framed for murder. But now we're playing more on the Kazuma side of being aware of the law or more. Are you feeling all right? Since we started talking, you seem, well, to have become a little flushed. Oh, my, um, well, it's just that you look so gallant and dashing. Sorry? And when I fall all under your intense gaze, it, well, it makes me rather bashful. That's adorable. Goodness, I don't think she knows. She hasn't realized who I am. It would seem our little plan for this trial is going to work. Oh, what? What do you mean, Professor Mikotova? If even your best, best friend can't see through the disguise, I think we can relax. Disguise? Yes, I have never tried dressing this way before, of course. So I wasn't sure how convincing it would be, but this does make me feel a little relieved as you say, Father. <gasps> I thought it was weird! Women aren't allowed to be lawyers! This seems like fraud! <laughs> this seems like it could go... Are, are they disguising her as Cosmo? Oh, lordy, please! Father? What? Is that... Is that you, Suzato? I'm so sorry I didn't say something sooner, Ray. It's just... No! What are you doing? What's going on? What? 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 That varsity uniform! The varsity cap! The varsity cape! The varsity badge! Look at you! You look for all the world just like a student at the Imperial Yume University. A male student! I'm so glad you think so. It means my preparations have been worthwhile. I woke okay, at four this morning to make a start. But, but I don't understand. Why are you dressed like that? Well, you see, it was the only way. The only way she could be remitted into the Supreme Court to take you all on your defense in this trial. My, my defense? Never before in my life have I felt so frustrated at never being born at being born in this into this body. Courts in Japan are barred to women. We're not even allowed to set foot inside the courtroom. Despite the fact that the laws of the land apply to all people, male and female alike. But women are forbidden. Just for today, I'll be leaving my true self at the courtroom door so that I can act as your lawyer. Oh, Suzato, you'd go to such lengths for me. This still seems like fraud and potentially sanctionable by the courts considering 
you disguise yourself as a man, but women are forbidden, so null and void the trial, potentially? Of course, you're my greatest friend. I just worry that I shan't be the lawyer you deserve. Oh no, I have complete faith in you. Ray. It's so strange, though. I mean, you're such an accomplished judicial assistant already. And yet, just because you're a woman, what a wretched reason. I mean, why shouldn't you be allowed in court? You're so gallant and dashing. I like that she says that even now, knowing that it's Suzato underneath. <laughs> um, Ray? Please don't look at me like that, with those flushed cheeks and doting eyes. Oh, I, I, I'm sorry. It, it's just you really do look so dashing. Y yes, you mentioned that once or twice. You should be pleased. It means you look convincing as a man. I am pleased, I think. It certainly helped to bolster my confidence today. Ray. You're managed to put on a brave... Okay, this is some minor issues in translation. It's because your does not make sense there. Uh, you've managed to put on a brave face and all this, but I can see through it. I've noticed it's how your shoulders are slumped and how you're trembling ever so slightly. Cesaro, you do believe me, don't you? I didn't do it. I, I couldn't have. I mean, murder? Of course. You have nothing to worry about. Your conscience is perfectly clear. <laughs> Isn't that right? Yes. Yes, it is. Perfectly clean. I have absolutely no doubt in my mind about your innocence. Which is why I'll stand by you until the bitter end in this trial. Whatever happens, I'll always be on your side. Because that's what it means to be a defense lawyer. That means so much to me, Suzato. Defendant, counsel, the court is about to begin. Proceed to the courtroom at once. Okay. You should go in at once, Ray. If you're late, the judge won't hesitate to pronounce you guilty. Oh. Stand aside! I don't think I've ever seen her run so fast. Also, fucked up from the judge! Well, Suzato, you've clearly surprised your father. You're going to such lengths to be admitted into the courtroom with no prior experience of being a lawyer. I feel like she has a little prior, if not directly, but indirectly. There was simply no other way. That's all there is to it. But father, you haven't told her, have you? I mean, I'm right in that assuming that Ray doesn't know how it came to this. Yes, quite right. I've kept that information from her. It would only worry her if she found out that no other lawyer would agree to take her case. I didn't want to burden her with that. And is it true the reason why every other lawyer is refusing to take the case? Is it really because of who the victim was? Probably, they didn't want to fucking charge her because of who the victim was. We should be making a move, move now too. As you know, law is in my field, but I'll do what I can to support my student. Thank you, Father. Don't call him father in court. It will raise many red flags. I'm Suzana Migatoba, a judicial assistant. Eight months ago, I accompanied a student of law on a, tri on a study trip to Great Britain. But two months ago, due to unforeseen circumstances, I found myself back in Japan. How many times I have wished that he were here, I wonder. Still, I have no choice now but to steal myself for the trial ahead. Wish me luck. 
Naruhoto. That's what it fucking was. August 9 a.m. Supreme Court of the Judiciary Courtroom 1. Oh, good lord, it's this fuck again. He changed his hair. It's court now in session to hear the trial of Ray Mimbami. I hate it. You look like a fool. Ouchie. The prosecution is fully ready to proceed, Your Excellency. Defense counsel, are you ready? Yes, Your Excellency. We are ready. Ready. Ah, yes. Counsel. According to your registration detail, your name is... Mm, Ryutaro Naruhoto? Is that correct? Sorry? Oh yes, I had to come up with a suitable male name for you in this little venture. So I'm afraid to say, I simply put you down... We put down the first name that sprung to mind. Well, counsel? Ah, um, yes, that's right, that's me. I'm... I mean... Yes, I am Ryutaro. He who has vowed to uphold the pride of the great Naruhoto clan. Ah. Seems Ryutaro may need to consider how to better uphold his manly act first and not overdo it. And those wild, wide eyes aren't doing you any favors either. Just relax and listen. Naruhoto. A fresh face in this courtroom, if I'm not mistaken. But the name Naruhoto. Will that perchance be... You may be thinking of Ryunosuke Naruhoto, currently in Britain as part of the study program. Me. This is, um, his cousin. That's right. Ryutaro here, who has been studying in the provinces and was called to the capital for this trial. I assure you, in matters of law, his knowledge rivals that of any Tokyo of his preeminent lawyers. Any of them. What a pitiful situation. Having been rejected by every lawyer in the capital, the accused has had to call in the country boy. How dare you! Suzano is every bit as gallant and dashing as any of you. Oh, good lord. <laughs> Ray! I won't have you making fun of her. Her? Oh, I'm, uh... Please be careful, Ray. What an unrefined tomboy we have here. But I wonder, is your gallant and dashing lawyer up to the challenge of defending you? His wide, skittish eyes very much suggest that he is not. Ugh, I'm so nervous. That I'm standing in his shoes, I'm starting to understand what Naruhoto goes through. Like it or not, eyes are wont to flint. The case to be heard on this day is a matter of great significance to our national interests. In fact, it would be reasonable to assume that the outcome of this trial may well affect the very future of our empire. Just like the trial nine months ago. And yet, for proceedings of such importance, we have this unknown yokel by the dock. Dear me. Hmm. Perhaps this would be an appropriate moment for me to assess the defense. To determine whether you are sufficiently competent to practice in this courtroom. Nine months ago, when a certain other Naruhoto stood with where you're standing now, the same judge tested him as well. And even though he was just a student at the time, not even, even of law, he passed the test with flying colors. For a trained and experienced judicial assistant like you, this will be easy. So, counsel, do you consent to answering in some simple questions? Alright, it's time to prove myself. 
you can it's clipping a little bit on the uniform it looks like but it also like almost serves in showing that it's not fitting well at least around the wrists yes our excellency please do make them simple very well to start with you will state the name of the victim phew that is simple i couldn't forget that if i tried What's the matter? Now that I'm standing in his shoes, I'm starting to understand something else Naruhoto goes through. <laughs> like it or not, minds are want to blank. It's not surprising, really. It's your first time in this position and in that guise. Even a bright spark like you is bound to flicker and falter a little under the circumstances. Oh dear. This is a dismal failure. <laughs> Don't fret, you need only use the knowledge you've gained as a judicial assistant to overcome the problem. Of course, the court record. Yes, the answer will be amongst the key information about the case in the courtroom. That's right, just use R to open the court record. Then you need to flip to the people section. Yes, 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 yes. And this is a bit of tutorial aspect that I'm going to skip through a bit more. Uh, Alright, check the court record. Give me this. Give me people. Jezile Barrett. Fits in the case with a former British exchange student nine months ago. She was found guilty of the murder of visiting professor Dr. John Wilson. And yet, somehow, free enough to be involved in her own murder. I'm waiting, counsel. What is the name of the victim in the case? She raised her hand. <laughs> the name of the victim who lost her life in this case is Miss Jezile Barrett. Jezile Barrett. The name that will never be forgotten in the courtrooms of our country, I'm sure. Correct. And being a member of our Empire's judiciary, you will be well aware of the significance of that name. I mean, Murderer got murdered. Hmm. So, let me pose another simple question. As you know, Miss Barrett was a visiting student from the Empire of Great Britain. Why, then, is her name indelibly associated with our own Empire's judicial history? Obviously, you won't have forgotten that case from nine months ago. But if it's proving hard to recall the finer points, everything you need is in the court record. Obviously, I still remember. That was the start of everything. Jezal Barrett. Behind the woman's student persona was the face of a killer. Yes. <laughs> Nine months ago, a visiting professor of medicine at the Imperial Yume University was killed. And the culprit was Jezal Barrett. Yes, she was a killer. Yet somehow still in this country to be murdered. <gasps> At this time, our country had just signed a new treaty with the great, with the Empire of Great Britain, and it was in the midst of a delicate diplomatic situation that the incident occurred. An Englishman, Dr. John H. Wilson, was shot dead. I believe he was an associate of yours, Professor Mikotoba. Yes, I was indebted to the man. He'd been my mentor when I was well, when I went to London to study forensic medicine. Indeed, it was I who invited him here to Japan as a visiting professor at the university. Naturally, the murder of an Englishman on our soil was a matter of or the government wished to resolve rapidly. Indeed it was, which is why a secret trial was conducted here at the Supreme Court. A student of the Imperial Yume University was arrested on suspicion of murder. A second year English language student by the name of Ryonosuke Naruhoda. I forgot he also wasn't studying law. But now a dude's just a fucking lawyer. <laughs> 
With the help of his best friend, a student lawyer, the accused conducted his own defense. And exposed a despicable crime committed by Miss Jezile Barrett. Miss Brett eventually admitted to her crime. However, when questioned about the motive that drove her to take Dr. Wilson's life, she gave no satisfactory answer before the trial reached its conclusion. Immediately after the trial, the British government brought its counselor judiciary into play. We were unable to sentence Miss Brett in according to our empire's laws. It was decided that she would be removed to Shanghai, China instead. Why Shanghai? There's a British consular court there. Correct. I oversaw the negotiations personally. The date of return of her to Shanghai was finally settled upon only last week. All that remained of our empire's obligation was to see the woman safely on board a steamship. And yet, the very day before her departure, the English woman was killed. Only the day before? Corpse run slow. Because it took fucking nine months for that to happen. That will do. I'm satisfied with the council also for the defense. It's sufficiently capable of representing the defendant. Oh. Forgot that was still happening. Thank you, Your Excellency. Over the first hurdle. Now, a summary of the incident, if you please. Prosecutor Ouchie. As you wish, Your Excellency. The repugnant crime took place on the 11th of August in the broad daylight. On the outskirts of the imperial capital, under a bright blue sky, a secluded bathing spot by the sea. The incident occurred inside a small beach hut erect for bathers to rest or change their clothes. The cause of the death was a single stab wound to the posterior abdomen that pierced the victim's lung. An injury which proved fatal. There were two persons alone together in the beach hut at the time that I'm the victim's death. Miss Barrett in her bathing attire. That was her bathing attire? And the accused, Ray Mbambi. Mbambi. I still don't get it. Accordingly, there can be no doubt out of the accused's guilt, especially when we consider she has a powerful motive. The police arrived rapidly at the scene and promptly arrested the young lady. What motive? I want to know this motive first before you start throwing around that there is one. Well, that extraordinary description of events leaves me somewhat lost for words, I must say. That's certainly true. The prosecution's summary was full of words that raised an awful lot of questions. As a lawyer, I really ought to pick, pick up the prosecution counsel on what he said about a powerful motive. What the fuck do you mean, powerful motive? You're clearly exaggerating. Powerful motive is a blatant overstatement. Is the yokel boy using long words he doesn't fully understand? I beg your pardon? No matter, let us put, put this to the accused, shall we? I'm just going to say, Ray, hey, you are a research assistant assistant at the Imperial Yume University, I believe. Yes, I am. I am working with Professor Mikotoba in his laboratory at the moment. I can confirm that. The defendant is an excellent assistant with a strong sense of responsibility. Fascinating to hear. Now, another question. Prior to your work, Professor Mikotoba, whose research were you assisting then? Oh, um... Well, I was studying under Dr. John H. Wilson. Dr. Wilson? 
the visiting English professor who was murdered by Miss Barrett nine months ago? The accused had a deep-seated respect for her former mentor, Dr. Wilson. Is that not true? Yes, Dr. Wilson was a wonderful man. Interesting. Then tell the court what deep-seated feelings you had toward the English woman who killed him. Well, obviously I was filled with hatred for what she'd done. A powerful hatred. Oh no, Ray, be careful what you're saying. Ah. The motive was revenge. Plain and simple, Your Excellency. I'm sorry. The idea of someone just... Still, murder just out in a bathing spot alone? Excuse me? <laughs> so during this entire time where you're looking to ship her off, you couldn't, you know, at least have someone watch her? Yep, you need to play it. Oh, good lord. What is this? Hmm? Well, it was clearly a trap all along. How wicked of him to use Ray's undying respect for her former mentor against her like that. I must find out more details on something we can use to bolster our defense. Hmm. As a lawyer, I really ought to pick up the prosecution counsel of what he said about... Um, if I may, Prosecutor Ouchie, what do you want, you fresh-faced young local student? I wonder, could you explain, please? You mentioned a bathing spot. Ah, uh, my apologies. Clearly, my mon- a modern Indy has confused the poor country bumpkin's simple mind. Bathing spots are the very latest trend in health practices from the West. We are told that bathing in the water of the ocean is curative, therapeutic, and excellent for the skins. No, that's not what I meant. I was referring to the fact that Miss Barrett had, to all intents and purposes, and purposes, been found guilty of murder. Why would a known criminal have been relaxing by the sea? Thank you! Got anything for that, ouchie? time's sake, I believe. Sorry? Miss Barrett was to depart for Shanghai the following day. Her final wish, as it were, was to simply enjoy a day at our country's wonderful coast. And the British Embassy put extreme pressure on our government to comply. But, but what grounds would we agree to such a request? Because, as usual, our government is unable to stand up to foreign powers. In matters of diplomacy, it seems we don't even have the courage to decline the whims of a known criminal. Don't look at me, Professor. It was the government who granted permission, not I. You kiss her ass so hard during that trial. Fuck you, ouchie. Feel like you were kissing ass even as she admitted guilt. In any case, it was decided that... With a dedicated detective on duty, nothing could go wrong. Okay, so there was someone watching, so they weren't fucking alone. But in fact, a murder took place. I, I said, don't look at me. It was that young student girl who did it. No, not I. No one has proved that yet. I wouldn't provoke the man if you don't need to. Fuck him, he deserves it. <laughs> hmm. At this stage, I need to gather more information, I think. As a lawyer, I really ought to pick up the prosecution counsel on what he said about being alone together. Hmm, Raisa? Yes, what is it? I mean, uh, Naruhoda-san? I'm really starting to wish you would make my alias Ryutaro Suzato. 
just tell the court where I exactly you were present at the bathing spot with the victim in the first place? And why you were alone with her? Oh, well, no, that's not true. It wasn't like that at all. There were other people present, a detective who was guarding Miss Barrett for starters. I was just asked to accompany Miss Barrett as a companion, that's all. Why? Fucking why? Why does she need- why was this necessary? But let us be clear. At the moment of her death, you were alone together with the victim in the hut. You and no one else. The truth is, there is only one reason that this young woman accompanied Miss Barrett to her bathing in the sojourn. It was the accused's last chance to take the victim's life. No. Because, as we know, the following day would see Miss Barrett extradited to the British authorities in Shanghai. And the accused would never have the opportunity to dispatch her again. This is full of fucking bullshit! Kindly refrain from conjecture, counsel. I believe we all have a clear picture of the incident now. Despite her guilt being determined nine months ago, Miss Barrett managed to avoid incarceration and instead continued her research work at university. Her research was part of the cause or the, like, not cause, the method of her murder. Why would she be even allowed to touch anything? She was working on poisons. Don't trust the bitch. <laughs> Oh my god! Obviously, over that period, she and Ray would have encountered each other at, numer at a number of occasions. Seeing the murder of the mentor for whom she had such great res respect enjoying such undeserved liberty. Yes, even if it was only temporary until Miss Barrett's extradition to Shanghai, you can hardly blame Ray for her feelings of anger and resentment. Poor Ray. So, Your Excellency, if you'd be so kind as to peruse this exhibit. A photographic print that shows the scene of the crime immediately following the grim incident. Yes, thank you, Counsel. A tragic image. As you can clearly see, there is no one within the hut that can anyone else could have hidden. The court will accept this photograph print in as evidence. As I understand it then, the victim and the defendant were alone inside the beach hut at the time. This is deeply troubling, I must say. The finger of guilt points firmly at the defendant. Well, Your Excellency, naturally the prosecution has much more to its case. We intend to prove the accused's appalling actions beyond all reasonable con intention. To that end, I confirm that we have multiple witnesses to the crime and damning evidence. Witnesses? But... Okay, no, Cohen bullshit. You can't have witnesses if they were alone in the hut. You can't have witnesses to the crime. You may have witnesses post the crime's occurrence. Duh, we're back to the highly respected police detective. I'm calling whore shit on that. Ugh. Last time we had to deal with one, he was a secret, not actual officer. Or no, it was a waiter serving as an officer. Who then stole fucking evidence? <laughs> oh my god. One of whom I might have the highly respected police detective. I assure you, the testimony of these witnesses will leave no room for doubt. <sighs> I have doubts already. 
on your claims, ouchie. <laughs> Very well then, Council, bring forth your witnesses. I, Takasuchi Auchi, have been waiting for this moment. Sorry? Oh yes, I haven't forgotten. The trial nine months ago, here in this very courthouse, when that irrelevant little student boy utterly humiliated me. Rihanasuke <laughs> Naruhara. Yes? This insult to the Yangtze family name will never be forgotten. <gasps> You've been become... I mean, conceited with age, Council. But the old have to stand aside and make way for the new. It's the way of the world. May you never forget that. Oh, that's why you have a new haircut. Because Kazuma sliced your shit. <laughs> Strike the head of a samurai whose top knot has been cut and the bell of cultural enlightenment tolls. Yes, on that fateful day, my former self died. The start of your own mini Meiji revolution. Are you modernizing as well, Council? Silence? Since I swore revenge back then, there has been a minor m miracle atop my head. Observe the ouchy growth. You see, this seed of hope sprouting forth from the barren expanse of my crown. I, th I think that growth is trying to tell me something. Um, I'm afraid I can't really see. Where, where's the hope exactly? I said silence? Today, I face another Yoko student of the Naruhoto clan. Well, I will vanquish you. And my victory will be fertile. As if for the seed of hope atop my head, you have been warned. With that, the prosecution calls the witness is to the stand. It looks like the stakes are high on both sides in this trial. Prosecution and the defense each has much to lose. A haircut is hardly comparable to Ray's life. I want him to rip his own hair out at the end of the. Oh my god, it's these fucks. <gasps> no. <laughs> Fucking no. Witnesses, please state your names and occupations for the court. Chief Inspector Saru Satoru Hosonaga, Imperial Police Bureau. I'm in disguise, obviously, so I can go undetected. Sosuke and I, well, the next big thing in book, books, an author renowned throughout the capital. In fact, yes. Soon to be sold out, the satirical Am I a Cat? Sensational Success by Sozoke Natsume. Oh my goodness. Also, who the fuck is the photographer? Struggling in student from the provinces, please. You needn't be in awe of me. I need it? It's only natural that you'd feel nervous in my presence, but all of you, please relax. Call me Sosuke even. What on earth is Sose? Oh no, it's so uh, Soseki. I think. Soski. Tread carefully, Suzato. That author fellow knows you from the time in London, doesn't he? If he exposes you for who you really are, this will be over before it's begun. So does the fucking detective! <gasps> yes, yes, of course. I know. I presume on Sosuke, you would have forgotten about me. I could certainly never forget him. Although he does seem to have changed somewhat in six months or so that it's been since I last saw him. And as for the Inspector Hosunaga, that amazing outfit is hard to believe. He has a little turtle atop. 
top of his head. Do I have something on my face? Well, your glasses for one, although they don't seem to be helping you see. Thank goodness he hasn't recognized me either. Ah, oh, I suppose it's the skies, isn't it? I thought that appearing here in these clothes I was wearing at the time would make for a more faithful testimony. It is my guiding principle to carry out all testimonies flawlessly. Hmm, well I can appreciate why Imperial Police Bureau Detective might have been present. But what business did a writer such as yourself have being at the sea, in Sasuke-san? Ah, well, you see. I have been asked that day to give a lecture. On the morning of the incident at the Imperial Yume University or City's Grand Lecture Hall, no less, at Yume University. After the lecture, I had a very pleasant conversation with a researcher from the Medical Science Department. The professor over there, in fact. With my- with Professor Mikatoba? Yes, that's right. It was arranged by one of the newspapers. They wanted some story or other about two former students who studied in Great Britain. Of course, being renowned author, the press never leave me alone. The secretly spy, snapshot, scribble, stories, and sculpture my privacy. Ha! Huh. As you can see, the conversation was written up in this newspaper here. Reading at your leisure, my provincial struggle student and friend, I have plenty of copies. Thank you very much. She practically threw that paper at me. Entered into the court record. Anyway, following my interview with the professor, the lady in question appeared and made a very unexpected announcement. I should like to go with everyone to see your country's coast. Those were her words. As I explained before, Miss Barrett was never taken into custody. She continued to work in my laboratory under strict surveillance, of course. At which utterance, the university immediately contacted the government to seek guidance. I mean, the response was, permit Miss Barrett to go along as a detective accompanies her. That detective, I am at liberty to divulge, was me. Chief Inspector says, Aru Hosonaga. Thereby, the entire party already departed cordially for the seaside, it seems. It was extremely challenging to clear all other members of the public from the vicinity at the beach. But fortunately, I am in peak physical condition at the moment, so... Are you? I still feel like you're dying. <laughs> I was able to carry out my duty flawlessly. Oh my, Inspector, you... Well, you do have something on your face now. Ah, how unsightly. I do apologize. Does that mean that you went to the beach too, Father? No, no. Fortunately, I had work to finish off. But unfortunately, of course, it meant that as my assistant, Ray was invited to take my place. Of course, being a renowned author, I didn't like to decline the invitation. Ah, oh, but if only I had, I'd never ever have seen that awful sight. Relentlessly racked by remorse and regret. Very well, I must now ask you to present your formal testimony to the court. You will give an account out of all you witnessed on your impromptu excursion to the coast. Of course, Your Excellency. Relentlessly racked by remorse and regret, I am. His eye is even twitchy. On the day of the incident, I was ordered on a special surveillance assignment in this disguise. I just managed to catch that crab when I suddenly heard a crawful caterwaul from behind me. I ran into, into the beach hut at once where I found the pair in question. Yes, yes, yes. That young girl was astride the English woman dagger in hand as she stabbed wildly. I saw blood on the blade. It proved to me that she'd stabbed the victim multiple times.
Indeed, it does appear from the testimony that both witnesses were here were present saw it. The very moment of the heinous crime. I thought it was a single stab wound. Now, if you wish to recall, I promise evidence and says well. What phrase did I use again? Ah, yes, it was damning evidence. What have you there, counsel? The so-called fountain pen, is it? Correct, I think I found it at the scene whilst examining the body. It appears that in her dying moments, with her final ounce of strength, the victim clutched a piece of evidence that would positively identify her killer. What? Your Excellency, if you would cast your eyes over the photographic print on the scene of the crime once more. Oh, goodness me. Yes, the victim is clearly grasping something quite deliberately in her hand. That's right. The fountain pen. I mean, if you would kindly examine the pen, Your Excellency. Ah! The owner's initials have been engraved into the ebony barrel. R.M. Ray. The initials of the defendant. Oh. No. The fountain pen will be emitted immediately as critical evidence. Uh, so I have... Have I admitted anything? The size of testimony and damning evidence. There's a bright blue sky outside the courthouse today. Perfect weather to ascribe guilt, I feel. I I don't understand. The prosecutor ouchie of nine months ago. Had none of this man's poise. Counsel for the defense, you may begin your cross-examination now. Naruhoto? Naruhoto. That means, oh yes, me. Is there another Naruhoto in my courtroom? Actually, there isn't even a single Naruhoto in your courtroom. Cousin Ryutaro, pull yourself together, please. All right, I've seen this countless times as a judicial assistant. Find inconsistencies in the witness testimony to prove that they're lying somehow. That's all there is to it. That's how a real lawyer would handle a cross-examination. So let's see what I can do. Okay. The witness scene. On the day of the incident, I was ordered on a special surveillance program to... in this disguise. In that jaunty disguise. Correct. Wait, no, I mean, it was the first time I've worn this swimsuit for a dip in the ocean. It's tried and tested. Do what you must be done to keep the English woman under surveillance. Those were my orders that day. And this tried and tested outfit was the answer. Being able to blend in flawlessly with the crowd is an important part of a detective's job. I submerged myself in the salty water, leaving only Mr. Turtle floating inconspicuously on the inconspicuously on the surface. Mr. Turtle loves the water. If that turtle moves, my God! But there was no need for you to blend into the background on this assignment, really, was there? If that made you late arriving on the scene, I think perhaps you had your priorities wrong. Ahem. Perhaps I shouldn't pursue this line of questioning any further at the moment. I just managed to catch that crab and suddenly a hurricane wall from behind me. I don't think I need to press on that one. I ran to the beach out at once where I found the pair in question. Wait, by pair, you don't mean to say, but how could that be? No, no, you misunderstand. Obviously, I mean the victim and the defendant, Ray. Eh? Oh, 
It wouldn't have been helpful if you could have just said that from the outset. If you jump to a conclusion, you have to expect to fall flat on your face sometimes. Dear me, pinning your hopes on such an outside chance. Foolish, very foolish. It really was an outside chance. I just really wish I'd realized that before I said something silly. So, Inspector, why don't you tell the court how exactly you found the aforementioned pair in the hut? Well, it was a sorry sight, a really grisly scene. I parted the northern curtain hanging in the doorway and stepped inside only to see the defendant leaning maliciously over the lifeless body of the victim sprawled on the sand. My glasses very nearly cracked at the ominous sight that met my eyes. How thoroughly appalling. He doesn't appear to be lying here. Well, Sozeki, can you confirm what the Inspector Hosonaga is saying, I wonder? Ah. You'd like a literary, ma literary man's opinion. Yes, yes, yes. That young girl was astride the English one, dagger in hand, as she stabbed wildly. Okay, he wasn't saying she was stabbing. Stabbing and wildly. You say you saw her do it? Oh, indeed. The terrible specter, the terrain inspector, the bloody torrent, the author's torment. Every sight and every sound is still carved in my melancholy memory. That was my impression, at least, as a future literary sensation. Counsel, what on earth was that shrill aforementioned scream? Oh, n n no, I ha what are you insinuating? I'm as manly as a Japanese man as you. I wonder if I might interject here. Sasuke, something you said is troubling me. That was my impression were your words just now, I believe. Ah, so do you mean to say you're not confident that you really did see what you described? No, I mean, yes. I mean, I know what I saw. My ears didn't deceive me when I heard that scream, hence my eyes didn't deceive me either. I could describe everything I saw vividly. I could publish it all in tomorrow's newspaper serial. 